kind of suck. Choosing the tools for developing your game is an important decision and often devolves into just choosing whatever you feel like. Now that's a fine approach if you're developing a game as a hobby, but if you're doing this with the goal of creating a higher quality or ambitious project, it might not be the best way to go about it. In this video, I'm going to go over the process that I use to determine the tools for my game, which has worked out well so far, and I think it could be useful to some others out there. Now it's worth emphasizing that the process is the important part, and while I will be using my game as an example, don't just copy the tools someone else used for their project. If you've got a different job to do and you're under different constraints, you might need a different tool. Don't use a hammer when a saw would be better. Now it would be nice if it was as simple as define the game, understand the team and the constraints, and then just choose the tool which fits it. But in reality, you're going to have all kinds of feedback loops and pretty much everything is going to change, at least somewhat, over time. So when you're trying to understand each of the factors that will influence your decision, make sure you have some slack in your definitions, because you'll want to favor tools which are robust to change. And of course, this is going to depend on what you're making. Some aspects are going to be very fundamental to your game and unlikely to change at all, and some aspects are going to be very loose for quite some time. The first step in figuring out which tool to use is to understand the job you're doing. Games are very diverse, so there are many potential factors to account for here, but some common ones are the platform you're planning to release on, the graphics style, network conditions you're likely to uh, have to handle, and the inputs. The platforms in particular are really important ones to think about, especially in combination with the graphics. Consider the difference between developing for a high-end gaming desktop on Windows and a low-end Android phone. There's a stark difference in RAM, CPU, GPU capabilities, and you're going to care a lot more about things like power consumption in the Android case. Depending on the game, you might be able to rule out certain tools right away. It may just be infeasible to use them on a very resource-constrained platform. I'm not going to call out any particular tool here. It'll depend on how low-end you'll be targeting and how resource-intensive you expect your game to be, but I will go into evaluating tools later on in the video. There are a couple techniques which I found to be really helpful in clarifying the project in the early stages. The first is prototyping. This gets mentioned a lot in game development and there's a reason for it. It's a really quick way to identify good and bad parts of a game idea, and you can kind of proxy other platforms too, plug an Xbox controller into your PC and get a feel for the console gameplay. The second technique is whipping up a document where you just write everything down. It doesn't have to be some really professional, polished design document or something like that. The goal is to get things clear in your mind. I think this is particularly important for solo devs who might not have someone to bounce ideas off and validate things. Writing a document like this can almost work like bouncing ideas off yourself, and it can highlight contradictions, assumptions, and follow-up questions that you should be asking yourself. Let's use the game I'm developing as an example. I have an overview video for the game, link will be in the description. But the short version is it's a one versus one competitive tower defense game focused on ranked multiplayer. Since it's focused on one versus one gameplay, getting to a critical mass of players is extremely important. It directly impacts the quality of the gameplay experience. So my plan is to get to the game on as many platforms as I can. This also means I'll have to deal with unreliable networks on mobile devices. One of the pillars of my game is to make the player say wow. And this includes the graphics. So I'm not making life easy for myself here, but I've got a plan for how to achieve it and I'm pretty optimistic about it. Okay, so now we've got an idea of what we're trying to build, we've got to consider who is building it. The team has a big impact on tool selection, both in terms of existing expertise and preference. Let's take a look at expertise first. There's always an overhead to upskilling in new tools, so favoring existing skill sets is perfectly valid. However, there is a trade-off to be made here. Very generally, the larger a project is, the less the overheads of learning new tools matters. Sometimes the best choice is using what you're already familiar with, but sometimes the cost of switching can be worth it in the long run. Yes, this chart is a massive simplification, but the general principle is pretty sound. At some point, it does become worth it to switch over. Making this call can be quite difficult because Firstly, it requires looking far ahead in the project, and secondly, you're evaluating the impact of switching to a tool which you're not familiar with. 
To address these, I'd recommend those documents and prototypes we mentioned earlier. And in terms of understanding a tool that you're less familiar with, you can learn from others who are experienced with these tools. Colleagues, friends, Reddit, YouTube, Twitch, whatever you can use to connect with these people. Keep this in mind later on when we're discussing how to evaluate these different tools. Make sure you're not too quick to discount tools which you or your team aren't familiar with. So that's your team's or your expertise. The second factor to consider is personal preference. How much do you enjoy using this tool? This is a very important consideration, particularly for solo devs who are going to be very self-reliant to stay motivated, but you need to be careful here. It can be very tempting to give this factor a huge amount of weight, or even let it bias your analysis of your other options. One question you can ask yourself is, is the extra motivation I get from using this tool going to increase productivity enough to outweigh using a more suitable tool? And you can try to quantify it too. For example, assign factors to each side of the equation and see what happens. If the value proposition of learning a new tool is still unclear after this, I'd recommend sticking to what you know to reduce the risk. Now we've got a good idea of what we're building and who's building it, we're almost there. We just need to take a quick look at some final constraints. Budget, time, and legal. Now fortunately, these factors are a lot easier to evaluate and can often eliminate some tools outright. The licensing costs for game engines and compilers and whatnot are seldom an issue, but many of the audiovisual tools have significant costs associated with them, so make sure to account for that. Legal issues can also be a thorn in your side, particularly if you're based in certain countries or trying to use libraries whose license is incompatible with your project. So watch out for that, or you may get a nasty surprise very late into development. Now for the fun part, trying out the tools. This is where we look into the available tools and assess how well they fit our game. For this, I like to make a spreadsheet with a column for each of the factors that are important considerations for the project. It serves as a kind of checklist to make sure you've looked into the relevant aspects for every tool. So how do we find out what tools even exist for us to look into? Usually I just use the people also search for feature in Google, but finding those top 10 or whatever lists can also be a good starting point. Now we've got our options and the factors we're going to focus on, it's time to get hands on. Anything that you can't eliminate straight away, download it and give it a go. Have a bit of fun with it and take notes as you go. One of my previous videos is actually the result of this. I was really interested in Unity's change towards DOTS, the data-oriented tech stack, and I wanted to get a better idea of the impact of it. So I cloned one of Unity's DOTS sample projects, just rebuilding it with C++ and OpenGL, in order to do a performance comparison. This was probably a bit excessive in terms of the cost of doing the investigation, but had a bit of spare time, so I went for it. A few tips for evaluating tools. First, stress test your expected worst case conditions. If you're planning to make a bullet hell game, whip up a quick scene with a bunch of sprites flying around and collision detection enabled, then run it on various platforms to see how smoothly it runs. If your game uses the network and you're planning to ship on mobile or any situation where users might have unreliable or slow connections, it can be a good idea to simulate a poor network and see how your networking library or game engine handles it. Charles Proxy is a good option for simulating this. Similarly for power consumption. On Android, you can use Battery Historian, which takes a little bit of work to get up and running, but if you're shipping on Android, you're probably going to want to use this at some point anyway, so it won't be a waste of time. For iOS, it's easier. They have some pretty good tools for this. I'll leave a link in the description with some resources. And finally, it can definitely be worth doing a quick web search, just X engine versus Y engine or similar queries, just to identify any things that you might not have thought of, any unknown unknowns. Now, at last, we put it all together. We know what we're trying to do, we understand our team and our constraints, and we've got a spreadsheet which tells us how the available tools align with what we need. In my case, I'm targeting a wide range of platforms, including lower end devices. I have some ambitious goals in terms of the graphics and performance, and I don't need to do any physics simulation, so I get a bit less benefit from a lot of those third-party game engines out there. So I narrowed down to a fairly manual approach. Here's where I ended up. So I'm using C++, just raw C++ with no engine or anything like that. I'm using per-platform graphics APIs, 
I'm using a few helper libraries along the way. I'm using AWS for my hosting for the network games. And I'm outsourcing pretty much all of the audio visual work with some free tools on the side, for just placeholders and do some touch ups here or there. And this has worked out really well so far. It's not a finished game yet, but so far the amount of time I've spent on things which a third party engine would help me with has been fairly minimal. And the portability and performance seems very promising so far. Let's wrap this up. I know this seems like a pain, but it's much better to find out early rather than six months down the line when you're already committed to something. Of course, for prototyping or game jams, just get it running quickly and don't worry about all this stuff. Also, this doesn't all need to be decided up front. In fact, if you can defer some decisions until you have more information, that's a good thing. But once it's time to start committing significant resources down a certain path, it's probably worth making sure that that's the right path for you. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts or questions, leave a comment below, and I will see you in the next one.